I want to show you how to use MySQL, the database software that comes with XAMPP. Um, first off, I want you to realize that the program name is MySQL, but the programming language that you'll be using is SQL. It stands for Structured Query Language. MySQL is a program like how Dreamweaver is a program that edits HTML. MySQL is a program that manages and edits SQL, uh, the SQL language. Um, and of course, the very first thing that you will have to do is start this program, otherwise it's not going to run. Now, the main purpose that you're going to be using databases for on the web is to save information from your forms. And let me give you an example of this. This is an Excel file. It, you've probably used Excel, and so this will make pretty good sense to you. If we were to create a form that collected these bits of information, people can select a username, tell us their name, give us their email password. This, these rows would represent every time somebody fills out the form. And I think this makes a lot of sense. Um, however, we have to translate that into something that web pages can play with. Excel is not actually a great option for this. Excel lets us pick up things and uh, move them around and do weird copy and paste type of things. Maybe. There it goes. And we don't want that to happen in our web forms. We need to have them locked down so that they can only do what the form tells them to do. That's where programs like it's trying to send an email to Batman now. Let's go away. Let's get away. That's where this comes in. That's where PHP MyAdmin comes in. PHP MyAdmin comes with XAMPP and it is really just a series of PHP pages that let you manipulate the program that's running in the background, the uh, MySQL program. So here's what we need to do. We're going to create a new database and we're going to make it mirror uh, this entry, the Excel file. So I'm going to create under the databases tab, oh I'm sorry, just to make sure that you can get here, the address is localhost slash PHP my admin. And that'll take you to the home page, which is this guy. And, you, and you're mostly going to play with these buttons across the top. Databases lets you manipulate the, ex the existing ones. And you can think of these as your SQL files. And we want to create a new one. I'm going to call it registration. And there it goes. It shows up in my, uh, in my list. Notice how it's always lowercase. That's kind of a thing in, in SQL. Inside this file, I need to create what are called tables. The equivalent in in uh, Excel is different sheets. So think of every table as a different sheet. For right now, I'm just going to create the one. And I'm going to call it users. Now, I need to tell it how many columns I'm going to do. Well, I've got one, two, three, four. Um, I'm actually going to put in two more just to show you how these work. So I'm going to need a total of six. When I create these, this is a little bit odd, but because I'm creating them in sort of a or sort of a vertical format, each one of these is going to correspond to each one of these vertical columns. But they show it to you in sort of this way. It's a little bit odd. But my first one... All my uh, columns, I'm going to start them with user underscore. And this is just so it's a little bit easier to tell what table they belong to. So my first one is going to be user underscore ID. There's a rule in database design that every table has to have one column dedicated to something called the primary key. This is a key, this is a unique identifier for every field or for every uh, entry. So this one is going to be a unique serial number that's granted to each one of the entries. So when Bob Smith logs in, his is going to be number one. When Sally Jones gets in, she's going to be get granted number two. When Clark Kent logs in, his is going to be number three. But when his is deleted, Bruce Wayne's going to log in and he'll be number four. And this is called an auto number. First off, it only works if we set the data type, the type of information that goes in this form, is set to integer. And it just means whole numbers. 
the length is how many numbers long do you want it to be? If I put it to three, then it can be 999. Uh, that's how high uh, up these integers will count to. If I put four, it'll go to 9,999. Then across the top, we've got to set a few things. We've got to tell the computer that this is going to be our primary key. You can see there are other types of keys that we can have, but primary is the one we need to worry about now. And in order to do that auto increment thing, you have to click AI, which stands for auto increment. The other one that's not in our Excel file is going to be date created. And these names you can make up to be anything that you want, just as long as you're not using existing data uh, SQL commands. So I, it would be a very bad idea to call this integer. The SQL would say you're not, we're not allowed to do that. So date created, I'm going to set that to record what's called a timestamp. And this is an automatic feature. As soon as this uh, anyone creates an entry, it's going to record the exact length of time or the exact moment, the exact millisecond when this was created. You don't need to set anything else in here, um, but you can set this to current timestamp. It it will usually do it without that. Now with the remaining four, I'm going to do what I had in the Excel file: a username, a name, an email, and a password. So user underscore username. And the data type, well, it's not numbers, it's actually text. But text in SQL means up to two gigabytes of text. And nobody had better have a username that is two gigabyte long. That's just un un uncalled for. So I'm going to use something different called a varchar. This is a variable character or a variable number of characters. I can literally specify that I want usernames to be no longer than 20 characters. User underscore... Well, I'm actually going to skip name because there's a problem with that. There's another principle in web in database design called uh, where everything needs to be atomic. That means first name and last name should be in two separate fields because they're two separate pieces of information. We should not have a name field. That's actually considered bad form. So I'm going to have to do user first name. Sorry about that. User first name, that's going to be a variable character. And I'll again put it at 20. And user last name, varchar20. Next, I'll do user underscore, what do we have left? Email and password. So email, that's a varchar. Those can be a little bit longer. Let's put that up to 60 characters. And... I run into a snag. I need one more in here. And that's okay. We can come back and edit this any time, or we can actually tell it right now to add one column. So user underscore password, and that's a varchar, and that will say 20 characters as well. Now down at the bottom, I'm going to click Save, and in my registration, I now have a users table. And these two tabs up here are the ones I want you to pay attention to. Structure will give me all of the columns that I just created and their properties. Browse is probably not going to work. There's nothing here. The Browse menu will show me a view that looks more like this. Now, I haven't put anything in there yet, so I don't see anything. For this, I'm going to go to Insert. It shows me each of the columns that I created and gives me a place where I can type in info. So let me do this first one. First of all, you never need to put anything in the ID. We set that to auto increment, and it's literally auto. It'll take care of it itself. So I'm going to re-pop in my name. So B. Smith is going to have the first name of Bob and Smith, and he's got an email address, B. Smith at something.com, whatever it is, and his password is pass. Word with a zero, which is one of the most commonly used passwords. Don't use that password. And I'm going to click go. Now, what I want you to know is that after every single command that we've been doing, PHP MyAdmin actually gives you the actual underlying SQL commands. It actually prints them out here on the screen, so you can use this to learn how the language works. When you want to insert text into the database, 
use the command insert into the name of the database dot the name of the table then you list out in parentheses all of the column names that you want to put things into because you don't have to put stuff into every one of them you can leave some blank then you have to tell it what values you want to drop in there so for this instance user ID is going to get the first one which is just null we didn't put anything in there user date created is going to get current timestamp username is going to get B Smith and so these have to match up in order um, and that's how they'll go into the database now you'll be asked by a lot of sources especially when you're starting out to type in these commands and PHP my admin will let you do this this button right here is the one I'm clicking on it looks like a little cylinder with an arrow it brings up the query window and from here I can start to do stuff it even has a little SQL builder I can insert into and it gives me the full uh, full sort of pattern to it so it already knows users and it knows the column name names it puts all those in and it just kind of is waiting for me to put in the values let me start this from scratch insert into now you notice that this is in caps and nothing else is that's kind of a, another programming quirk of SQL it's not necessary it's just done to, so that I know what's an actual SQL command and what's the uh, and what's the column and table names that I've created insert into users and you notice that I didn't use uh, quotes in this one that one is actually uh, not necessary so I'm going to do username comma first name comma last name comma email comma password now I'll also make this a little bit easier to read maybe not sure what's going on Oops. Maybe I won't make it easier to read. And for some reason it doesn't like the little thing that I put in there, the the quote. Okay, so you have to list all the columns, and then you do the word values. And then in this set of parentheses, I need to put in what value I want for each of these. So my username will be We'll do Clark Kent now. C. Kent. He is Clark. Kent. His email is super and at uh, yahoo.com. Oops, I forgot my and lastly his password okay so this is it spaced out a little bit it really doesn't matter if you use the um, curly quotes that comes with SQL it'll accept either or the straight, uh, you can use these, or the straight quotes that I'm typing in. I just have to make sure that they're all the same. There we go. Now, I'm going to try and run this and see if I made any mistakes. Error. So let me see. I'm not actually sure what it is there they don't like. So let's just do this. Let's get rid of users. I'll just use their pre-formatted one. 
and I need to get rid of two of these values. Wait, it didn't actually do it, did it? No. I'm just gonna put in some stupid stuff in here. Test, 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 test. Oops. Test. Hope that works. Let's find out. Okay, I like that one a little bit better. So now when I browse it, awesome. There's all that info in. I'm not exactly sure what I did wrong on that one, but that's why we have these nice little point-and-click interfaces to make it easier. If you find that writing the code for some reason just doesn't work, this will generate the exact same thing. Now I want to show you how to export your entire database so that you don't lose all that information that you just created. Go back to the PHP My Admin homepage and go to Export. I want you to click on Custom. And if you just leave it on quick, it's going to export a copy of every single one of the databases that you just create, you have. So let's not do that. I'm going to click on the one that I want. And there's one setting that you'll need to check. Down here at the bottom, you need to create or check add create database use statement. This is the statement that actually tells the computer to create a new blank file, and then it'll go on to create a um, the tables and add the information into it. Then you can scroll down to the bottom and click Go. I may have some extra files here now. This file that I just created is a complete backup of what we just did. I'm going to edit it with Notepad. And what you're going to see is that there's some comments and stuff up here. It sets a few time zone things, but then it creates a database, creates the table, creates all the columns in the table, and then it inserts all the information that we typed in. So there's going to be my users, and then my users table, and then this is each of the different columns that we created, and it's going to insert the values into those columns. Well, row number one is going to get all this, and row number two is going to get all this. So once you're done with that, once you've exported it, you can do this. I'm going to go back to the home page. I'm going to go to databases. And now I can delete or drop the registration table. And that's going to go away. I have a registered. I can get rid of that one too. So now let's see if my if I can import that file back in. Click on the import tab. And all this will ask you to do is go browse for a file. Right here. Choose file. Grab that SQL file and open it. Scroll down, you don't need to do anything else, just click go and watch over on the left. My registration table uh, database is back with a users table that I can browse through that has all of my structure back. Everything's how it is. When you're working with your databases, what I highly recommend is that you create a database backup once you've created all of your columns and then you create another backup once you have all of your data in it and save those in a work folder in your website somewhere but make sure that you have these SQL copies